Hey folks, welcome back to some more Fate Granddaughter. On our last episode, Siduri introduced us to a wee tavern that we'll be using for the time being as our home base. We also got acquainted with Ushiwakamaru, Benki, and Leonidas before we set off on our first job in Uruk, which was to shear some sheep, but we ended up bonking some demonic beasties instead. So, with that we did bit in man, so let us continue henceforth and well, find out what our next job is going to be. Although, we are going to be up against some lances and archers, so... Cometh to me, waver, I choose thee! Hmm. And this shall be the team setup that I'm rolling with, because I just feel like changing things up just a wee tad, by using a couple of lizzies. Good morning, I guess we're heading to work at the same hour today. Siduri, what is all Dave's task for today? Today's request is from Miss Kisinama. His wife has been acting strangely for the past few days, and he'd like you to investigate. To be blunt, you're investigating an affair. Uh huh. Investigating an affair? Um, shouldn't things like that be resolved between the parties involved? Miss Kisinama is the boss at the armory. He cannot leave his workplace during the weekdays. But it's all weighing heavily on his mind, and it's affecting his work. An early resolution would be ideal. Also, he needs evidence if it goes to trial. Try to catch her in the act, identify the adulterer, and look into their history. Oh, that sounds interesting. Lord Dave, may I come along with ye? We are in charge of patrolling Uruk today. We shall help you out while giving you a tour of the city. Gladly! Ho ho ho! That's the spirit. Of course, I will accompany you too. You should not underestimate the difficulties of investigating an affair. It's normal for the cornered wife to show her devilish side and retaliate by swinging around a giant hatchet when caught in the act. Um. However, my Buddhist power is undiminished in a foreign land. Banky here will exorcise them without a second thought. What, Dave? Needless to say, you can ignore that to naysayers doom and gloom. Um, I won't be going with you. An old lady I met on the street asked for my help earlier. Oh, the lady from the flower shop, right? I do remember she was looking for an assistant. Ishiwakamaru and the others will help out, so we'll be fine on our end this time. Bowing. <laughs> then let us be on our way. First, we need to tell the wife. Uruk is like my backyard now. You can put all your trust in me. Come along. Well, let's find out, because we're going to be fighting some beasties. With no context at the moment. Maybe we'll just have post-context, yeah. Yeah. Ah! What? What? How, how did we get from Uruk to this landscape? What? Sure, why not? I am mighty confuzzled. Well, regardless, we're gonna have to bonk these heirlooms of the gods that just so happen to be here. Maybe Ushawaki Ma. Waki? Wakamaru's uh, <laughs> sense of direction goes here? I don't know! <laughs> Context, I require thee. Aye, that's fine, you bugger. Just need to bonk this last one, though. Now yeah, we have to prime up some little phantasms for the last wave. Nice. If it would pop up. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's a Kyohimi Lancer. Interesting. Good thing I didn't bring Brave Liz then in the, that regard. Because we have a single target saber. Right, ho. This will be sufficient enough, yeah? 
私の歌声聞きたいのねオッケーあとは任せてギャオユーツーサーバント界最大のヒットナンバーをナートリエルジェーベトに近い勝利だけど戦う前に勝つくらいでないかな。Oh, actually, can that we drop be a Lancer Jam? Please, please. And of course, it's a dragon enemy. Oh, gosh. Because it was Kyohibe. But right. Ah!、Oh, a Lancer Amber. Lame. I'd have taken a jam at the very least. That was quite an experience, wasn't it? Yes, it was quite a case. Actually, yeah, because, you know, exorcism, so I guess that explains the landscape that we were fighting. Yeah! Still puzzled on that one. Who would have imagined the wife was secretly a member of a mysterious species living deep underground, scheming to invade the surface world? Okay, now we have context! What? And who knew that there was an underground lava zone in the suburbs? What adventure! I can't even begin to put it into words! But it was tragic too! Her love truly was real, and in the end, it was what saved the surface world. Fiery love is universal. I can't believe she's the last of the Yohi men. I know, what's advice King Gilgamesh to adjust the laws regarding relations and martial or, yeah, marital issues with other species? So, no one ever has to see a tragedy like this again. Speaking of laws, Mesopotamian civilizations is built on the code of Urum Namu and the code of Hammurabi. The code of Urum Namu was created between this era and the third dynasty of Ur. It's said that it consolidated all the nebulous rules into one code, which became humanity's oldest structured law. I see, Mash, you're really well informed. Uh, no, I just have a smattering of knowledge. I don't know the dictates of the code in detail. By the way, Lord Dave, I heard you've only been here for a short time. We have been walking and eating around the city, but what about outside of Uruk? Neither Benki nor I are very knowledgeable about it, but we could at least tell you about the rumors. Tell me about the Free Goddess Alliance. Oh, but I'm curious about the second option too. What kind of hero is Ushiwakamaru? Ah, me? That's a difficult one to answer when asked so bluntly. As you can see, I am a Japanese warrior. That said, the story of my birth is fairly complicated. Born in the Heian period, raised in a temple, and trained by a tinker on Mount Kurama. So, I'm ignorant of the world. I'm a skilled swordswoman. That's all. Nothing else suited me. I was nothing more than my big brother's blade, or perhaps nothing else interested me. I would run around the battlefield of,、uh, without any special aspirations or ideals, just to captain enemy generals.、Hmm. Also, Ushiwaka Maru is my childhood name. If you were to summon me as a Minamoto, that is, when I had a position, I'd probably appear different. She's a god bodied warrior who brought death upon many compatriots and never corrected her foolishness until the very end. That's why I'm happy as Ushiwaka Maru, the person I am now, is able to accept everything without protest. Now, having that position is what lets me be in such good spirits and talk, you, talk with you like this, Lord Dave. With that in mind, well, this fleeting life is precious to me. I feel like I'm in an innocent dream, the sort I had when I knew nothing.、Mm, Lord Dave, it seems you're interested in Ushiwaka Maru. If so, talk to the Sample Seven in secret later on. After all, I, Misashi Bobanki, am Ushiwaka Maru's best retainer. We are inseparable as master and servant, we are like childhood best friends. I can tell you everything about Ushiwaka Maru's matter of fact heroic exploits and adventures. I will smash to the decoration. Read him one day so that. Please ignore him. I'm using him as a shield against arrows, but so far the chance hasn't presented itself. Ha ha ha! You are too harsh with me! This humble servant's position has become tenuous. Therefore, let us change to the subject. Lord Dave, you are investigating the Free Goddess Alliance? Yes, that is currently the most important issue. Ushiwaka Maru, by all means, tell us. Needless to say, the Free Goddess Alliance is a major threat to Uruk. The demonic front up north, the jungle in the south, and the aerial attacks from East Chart in the northeast mountains. Currently, the city of Uruk is under three separate attacks from these directions. 
Leonidas is keeping the demonic front to the north in check, but there are no countermeasures for the other two problems. The goddess Ishtar possesses a boat called the Boat of Heaven, as the name implies it's a divine vessel that can soar through the sky. She does not have the overwhelming force of the demonic front, but she is still a nuisance. She's like an unpredictable storm. As for the jungle in the surf, we didn't know anything about it yet. King Gilgamesh has sent out a number of scouting parties, but no one has ever returned. On the one hand, the demonic beast legion is a dynamic invasion. On the other, the jungle is a static invasion. So all the forces invading Uruk are unique. Three menaces, the three goddess alliance. Who are these goddesses and what do they want? Well, we do know that Ishtar is one of them. According to King Gilgamesh, the goddess's objective is capturing the holy grail he possesses. The great grail of Uruk? Eh, he fired it in front of. I mean, he allowed me to take a look. It did indeed look like it contained vast magical energy. Whether it be goddess, hero expert, or human, anyone who uses that grail could easily become king. Do you suppose the goddesses are after the, the, the greater grail to recreate this world in their own image after they destroy Uruk? The greater grail of Uruk? Is that what King Gilgamesh said, Ushiwaka? Yes, that is the name he was so proud to come up with. When I said I wanted to torture it, though, he refused quite vehemently. Hmm, a wise judgment for a wise king, much better than handing it to Lord Ushiwakamaru and having her accidentally drop it, smashing it to pieces. Or I can see you saying, I like this, so I'm keeping it, and then trying to decapitate the king. Ha 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 ha! Hmm. Lord and man, what's the matter? And Benki, go sit in the corner until morning. I have to recruit my son in death through saying, the lukewarm stares from the people of Uruk are excruciating. No, it's nothing. Now that I think about it, it's only natural. Forget it. The greater grail of Uruk is not this era's greater gr holy grail. I mean, whoopsie. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it means. From the beginning, King Gilgamesh possessed a treasure worthy of being called a holy grail. We mistakenly thought that that, that was the King of Meiji's holy grail. Gilgamesh and Merlin both realized that, but didn't point it out. Which is vexing. Merlin is brought into the core, so I'm sure we can never get a straight answer from him. And as for asking King Gilgamesh, he would only get furious and say, How dare you compare my treasures to the King of Mages! Either way, the Holy Grail we're supposed to recover isn't in Uruk, but somewhere else, correct? Or it could have already been used. There's a good chance of that. If you think about it, the very existence of the Free Goddess Alliance is strange. It's possible the Holy Grail was used to summon the goddesses. Mm, that's actually a point, yeah. Because they are deities. And some of them could be quite the taxing thing to do, so why not use a Grail, eh? But right! So lances and sabers. Anna is here. Which is nice. But right, okay. Do I want to go all AoE here again? I think so. But I want to change... Oh. Almost swallowed me word there. But I also want to change things up again. So... I think what I'll run is... I'll run... My Artoria. And... I think just because I haven't used her all too much... Let's bring... The Narrow... Radio. Let's go! Oh, Lord Dave, Bash, good morning! Fight weather we're having again this morning! King Leonidas, you're going out? Ha 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 ha! No need to address me as king! I am a mere soldier now! Nothing more than a shield to protect Uruk! And today I shall be a drill sergeant from hell in the eastern barracks! This may be a touch juvenile for someone like myself, but I'm going to take great pleasure in introducing the soldiers to the hell that is Spartan training! What they die? Ha 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 If a soldier dies from strenuous training, that it only proves they like spirit. And if the train is too much and they kill over, all I must do is smack some of that spirit back into their bodies and they'll perk right back up. Oh. Boo. That was one heck of a big smile on Mash. Good morning, Dave and Mash. Anna, I see you're up as well. Yes, something was very noisy. I thought it might have been an enemy raid. Oh, we disturbed you, eh? 
And then we're eight. Rest assured, as long as Leonidas is around, Uruk will not fall. Leonidas, was it? So that's what was so loud. Well, good work. Today's request is actually from Leonidas. He mentioned that his trainees are coming along well, so he wants you to have a mock battle with 100 of them or so. What? Huh? Um, what did you just say? I know how you feel, but it's best to just go along with it, really. Indeed, spiring with 100 people soon is stupendous. I engage in many such trials before my coming of age ceremony. But why such a hard task, you ask? Lord Dave, I assume you have a Spartan acquaintance? Phil, Phil! Special translation, you! Yeah! I do have a Leonidas as well! Just not leveled up. Someday, though. Someday. Oh. Oh, so it's just gonna be a gauntlet of ten of them. Well, at least that's just one tenth of them, huh? I guess we can save some uh, some game of phantasms for now, though. Well, besides narrows, I think. Yeah, I think that'll be a good idea. Just use narrows. Uh, I think I'll be good enough here, though. Go! Wow, that song really has a cut-off point on the speed-up thing, huh? Huh. Oh gosh, that's quite a few of sturdy ones, eh? Hmm. Maybe we could use our Torias here? Yeah, we use our Torias and we'll start charging up again. <laughs> Okay, let's go, Excalibur! Noise. Oh, that one's pretty chunky, though. Well, we do have an arch chain, so that's pretty good, in fact. So let's take advantage of it, shall we? Oh, close. Oh, how to again, come on, do it! No! Why are you Billy Waver? Gosh dang it. Could have kept my bus as well. Oh well. Ooh, knocked one of them out though. Hey, and the Noble Phantasm for whatever else may appear. Oh, the Hot Kids Drill Sergeant. By that we mean Leonidas. Well, ain't this just perfect? I wasn't expecting a pseudo boss fight though, so I kind of feel bad about bringing Waver. But if anything, I just sped up the whole AoE debacle, huh? Yeah. Anyway, let's just bap all of this. Well, I don't think we'll knock out Leonidas here though. No. At least we'll weaken him. Oh, you cheeky fucker of your guts. Man, you should have used your taunt, you cowards. Even though you're the only target on the field now. Oh, no crap. Go on, crap. Aw. You know, I know that Nero has the chance of an attack buff. Maybe I should have used Imperial Privilege a bit earlier. But I was thinking, maybe I'll save it for the heal because... Yeah, that seems about right. <laughs> of course it misses. 
つまらんではいいですね罠だオッケー、ペットネロー。マイキュー。You didn't have to do it twice though. Alright, now we can do this. Cool, cool, cool. Let's actually play a normal speed so we can actually hear Nero's theme this time, eh? Actually, wait, you, you, you speak for quite a while. Yeah, pretty grandiose speech there. Hey, yo! Animations at the normal speed. One, I appreciate the amount of work that goes into them, and two, it feels like it's someone watching it in slow motion though, because, oh, <laughs> it takes a while. Holy moly. But there we go. Oh, two proofs of heroes! Nice! I also take that answer monument. Man, I think we're done. As you can see, at a spider gets 100 men, you reach your limit around 60, but that's when the real fight begins. Muscles are a bit to give it, hearts a bit to pass, your energy reserves down to zero. I want you all to learn how to fight in such extreme conditions, just like how Lady Masha when she fought you all. Yes, sir! Very good. Well, that's enough muscle philosophy. We'll be talking about brains next. It's common sense that you would be strong when you're energized. After all, a body in peak condition can do anything. But once the battle starts, you start, you start to drop from your best condition with each passing second. So instead of trying to maintain your best condition, I want you to learn how to balance it with your worst condition. The tenacity you get from when you're in that state of fatigue reigns supreme. What can you do when you can't do anything? Under a sun that won't boost your survival rate, the limits of your sun at mana are much like waves breaking upon the shore. You'll be able to fight again if you can get over the peak of your fatigue. Do not forget, fatigue is not a bad thing. Yeah, uh, okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, this comes from the spirit. I say that you see ghosts when you're a weak spirited, but being wounded is bad. It's bad. If you're wounded, you need to switch it with someone else immediately. Fighting spirit does not heal wounds. Fatigue and injury are separate issues. Understand. No for the lesson to. Toss away your spear, but not your shield. Any spear will do, but a shield is special. You'll never find another one like yours. You must find the best shield for yourself. There's no shield superior to the rune shield. Oh, oh, I suppose he's right. Yeah! Leonidas, this class has started. I'm completely exhausted, but I'm going to participate to learn more. There we go. Master, please rest here. I, Mashakiri Light, shall return as a slightly better shielder. See? Are you tired too, Dave? You look like you can't move anymore. Oh, that's right. Anna's a rogue servant. She doesn't have a master. Servants that have contracted with a master can draw most of their magical energy from him or her. It is the master who determines a servant's possible energy output and how long they can fight. Of course, a servant can fight with the magical energy they generate themselves, but that would make them no different from a shadow servant. A servant will only truly shine after they've contracted with a master. They can be even more powerful if the bond is a strong and intimate one. I see. I was in the set of force this whole time, so I didn't know. You don't know anything about being a servant? No, when I came to, I was in the forest. And in this body, I had no knowledge about being a servant. But I knew just what I had to do. I had to kill those demonic beasts. I was killing them all alone and using their souls to maintain my spirit origin. Do you want a contract with me? 
No, that's fine. Please don't misunderstand. Oh, but those brief blushies, dang it! I'm here because of your hostilities with the Free Goddess Alliance. You will, without doubt, fight them at the Northern Wall. Merlin said so. I am just waiting for that moment. Whatever happens to humanity is none of my concern. Anna. Boo! Oh! Oh, no battles this time! You know what? May as well have a key, huh? Oh, good work. Come in. It's almost time for dinner. Oh, welcome back, Lord Dave. You are quitting the city river today. I was getting rid of troubles and birds. It's fine that they fly from roof to roof, but birds are pretty smart nowadays. They fly all through the main street, and I ended up damaging a total of four shops, including fruit shops and flower shops. Ah, uh, that's why King Gilgamesh looked so sullen. He said, I was the one who told you to come report the day's work. Yes, but I didn't tell you to come back with complaints. Can't be helped. Sacrifices had to be made. I imagine re restitution is going to come out of Benki's wages anyway. Rude. That was another good day of training. The men are almost full-fledged soldiers. Well, how rare to see everyone here at once. I'm a sitting here. Much funks. By the way, who's on dinner duty today? If it's Anna, I think I just remembered something I have today. Don't worry, I'm on dinner duty today. Wait, is Anna a bad chef? The neighbors kind of lent me their oven, so I made a butter cake. Ooh! Butter cake! You mean the desert? You need ten priestess silvers to buy that butter cake? That's the one. It is one of the best desserts. No need to pay for the ingredients. Please have as much as you wish. It's delicious. Can I save a piece for later? Of course, but please eat it before lunch tomorrow. It will go bad otherwise. Much obliged. Obliged, yes. Lady Suduri, however, since you are the High Priestess, is it really okay for you to visit us every day? It's fine, the King has ordered me to do so. I act as an aide to His Majesty during the day, so please do not worry. Oh, and all the clay tablets over there are tokens of gratitude from the citizens of Uruk. Take a look at them when you get a chance. This is our way of repaying you. Hmm, a homemade meal from Suduri. Don't mind if I do. Hey, good evening. It's been a while, everyone. Want me to listen to your reports? There's no need for that. Most of the time I just stayed in the house and didn't do anything. I know very well what kind of work Dave had to do. Fail, fail! <laughs> yeah, this is kind of... Are we in a door? I know, right? This is supposed to be the last singularity threat in humanity. But we've got so many people living under the same roof. No wonder it's turned into keeping up with the Chaldeans. Hey, I'd watch that show. It's important for you to get used to life in Uruk. It'll only help you to know how people lived in this era. You can kick and scream all you want, but a battle is inevitable. Why not listen up and have some fun for the time being? Are you sad that you can't join us, Doctor? Oof. Yeah, I suppose so. Suduri's food looks really good too. Oh. But I have yet another all night dinner party with the Chaldea staff. It feels like I'm living in a dorm here every day, so I don't feel lonely at all. Dave, don't worry about me. Have fun with everyone while you can. That's what's best for Chaldea too. Like they say, there's the right man for every job. Senpai. I love how cozy and homely the story is so far though. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, assassins, okay. Time to make a setup for that, huh? Wait, I know who I could maybe prank if they would so happily oblige and appear. Come on! Come on, come Okay, it may not be Zhang Zhang, but Amadea is fine too. It's alright, let's just change things up a bit, like have a Metamimo here, because she hasn't really been getting much use yet in Babylonia, so. Any excuse to use her is fine by me. I mean, granted, I very well could have brought her to other fights, like that Leonidas one and used her with Nero. But, it's all about the variety, baby. Wait, did I not? I didn't always select my thingamahoozits of my Prisma Cosmos. Oh well. Uh, where is she? Actually, no, we'll do this. 
then we'll change your craft essence to... Because we're not really going for crits this time around. Where is it? Formal craft. There we go. Right! Nice wee arts team we've got here. So let's hit the button. Good morning, Dave. Thanks for heading out to work so early. Good morning, Merlin. Are you heading out? No, I was out all night and just got back. I wanted to head straight to my room, but I needed to talk to you. It's been 20 days. Have you gotten used to life here in Uruk? Fortunately, yes. It's actually pretty fun here. Good, that's evidence you're a creature who adapts well. Humans have beautiful and amazing dreams because they enjoy everything they see. But unfortunately, I do have some bad news. Here's a message from Suduri. No requests today. Please use this day off to enjoy Uruk. A day off? That's good, but it, it, it is a bit disappointing, Senpai. I was excited to see what work we'd get today. A day off work? Well, I'll be taking my leave. Oh, but this is a good chance. Why not take Mash on a date? Oh! If it's a secret rendezvous you want, I recommend the gardens in front of Iana. Since it's Ishtar's bedroom, it has a fantastic variety of flowers. Schmuck bugger! Merlin headed for the second floor. Well, what do you think, Master? For the good of the mission, we must go on a date. A date with my cow high! Excuse me, do the both of you have a spare moment? If so, I have a job I'd like to ask you to do. Here's all the silver I've managed to save up. I exchange it for King's silver. I have seven. Would that be enough to have you accompany me for the day? Of course, we couldn't turn down a request from you, Anna. Payment isn't necessary either. Isn't that right, Senpai? We were just looking for some work worth doing. Mash is right. Leave it to us, Anna. Then I'll take you to the site. We'll have to fight, so I'll be counting on you. Yeah. Bond points are priceless, anyway. Huh? Fight? Fail, fail? Fight, you say? Some assassins? What may they be? Hmm. Maybe some automatons? Maybe some thugs? Or... Oh. Well... I had my series of speculation, but some ghosties, yeah, those are fine too. Regardless, they're just gonna die again! Yeah! <laughs> Wait, no! Don't oh, with the mouse speed! There we go! <laughs> okay! One dead thing dead! Back to the bonkin though. Okay. Let's even get a cheeky crit early on with this one. Oh! Nice! Oh! Cheeky. Oh! Ah, that's nice, that's nice. Okay. Let's get some MP gain here. Gauge from a day isn't as beneficial though, but then again, firing off two rule breakers could be nice. Firing off a rule breaker here might also be nice. Hmm. But then again, saving it for the boss fight, yeah. If there is one. Because we're going for free waves. Hmm. I'll just take it by the ear, huh? Why do, why do I say by the ear when it's by ear? That's how you mess up a saying, huh? <laughs> At least we can use nursery rhymes noble fantasy here, though. Should have actually attacked the big one. Or, well, the beefier one, because size wise, it's not really different. No. Don't do this. Guess we're gonna be using nursery rhymes noble phantasm here. So Maybe I'll do it up to the 45,000 one as well. As an MP3 after all. Oh, 
Oh, dead. Nice. Hell, you up. Anyway, if Tamil was normal Phantasm 2. Oh, so it is a boss. Oh, it's a massive ghost again. Oh, hello there, sir. Would you like a real breaker to the face? Because I think you do. Yes. Rule breaker time! did just kind of make that moot though. It indeed did. And also we could just do this. No, not that. These. <laughs> oh dang, that's all of it, B-Gage. Alright. Time for a brave chain. <laughs> go, go, give me another shank! <laughs> Or again there. Just don't reduce the gauge. Don't. Thank you. I guess it's time for another rule breaker. After a nursery rhyme, though. Gosh. How many times do you have to break the rule? <laughs> or rules. Hey, there we go. That wasn't so bad. And we've got a bunch of ghost enemies done for the master missions, too. Oh, and one ghost lantern. Nice! Good work. I think we've defeated all the evil spirits around here. If I were alone, some might have gone away. Thank you. I was surprised there was a cape underneath Uruk, but those spirits were every bit as shocking. Anna, do you know what those spirits were? I'm not sure, but they are like Grim Reapers, I think. You two may not have noticed, but a deadly disease is spreading in Uruk. Starting with the weak ones, people fall into an eternal slumber. Those spirits must be connected to that somehow. Which is why I thought getting rid of them might reduce the death toll. I see. In the age of gods, physical death is different than spiritual death. Even if the body's fine, if the soul is taken away by a Grim Reaper, then it means death for that human. That's right, except having the soul taken away is not quite death, and it's more like being asleep. As long as the body is safe, returning a person's soul will, be, will wake them up. In the age of gods, bringing the dead back from Kur is simply a type of medical treatment. So even if your heart stops, you can come back as long as your body is preserved. Is that what you mean? Yes, but a person cannot be revived if their soul is destroyed before it reaches Kur. In that case, the body will share the same fate as the soul. It will shut down and eventually return to the earth. Hmm, a life after death sounds very Age of Godsy. That must be one reason why the quality of the mana is different here. So, going to the underworld itself doesn't equal death. Death is the nothingness that awaits beyond Kerr, beyond the underworld. In Uruk, that nothingness is called the Abyss. Whatever it is, the spirits from Kerr are like kidnappers that steal the souls of the living. There seem to be many here, so um, I had you help me get rid of them. You did this for the people of Uruk? No, they were simply an eyesore. Anyhow, we have defeated all the spirits. I will go and report to Siduri. Please excuse me. 
Oh, wait, Anna. I'll go with you. Senpai, please head back without me. I don't think Anna will be able to properly explain to Suturi on her own. No. We're all by ourselves now. Let's head back to the embassy. Who's the old man? He's not from around here, is he? Goodness, a beggar! It's like he's so he's not even an injured soldier either. Just leave him. The caretakers will probably come soon. That's what the secret temple's budget's for. That's true, but he hasn't moved it off from that spot. I don't think he's in for at least two days. Fail, fail, fail! I know. Wait right here, fur. I know I had some wheat silver left over. Quiet to leave some bread. It's not much, but please have some. Foo foo! Halt! Foo! Um, uh, did I do something wrong? Indeed, hear me and attend. Child, remember this. Petty betimes can be a crime unto itself. Fine of purpose, compassion to evil is twisted, so too with shame. However, tis not but the bitterness of age that scorns kindness thoughtfully given. Your insight, child, impresses me. Your gift was not mere money, but that which was most needed. I shall gladly accept it. The foo? But you're not gonna eat it? Hmm, having accepted your charity, I must offer recompense. See, Sudra, I, I am called, as you see, I am no more than an old man bereft of a future. However, child, a future may not be yet yours, so to you, counsel is greater than any coin. Aid me, child, free storms will soon sweep over Uruk. Amplify, not with the hateful one, celebrate not with the joyous one, and extol not the pained one. Remember, always in defiance of your purpose it may be, but tis a fool's task to set a man against God. Who are you? Oh! Oh, he's gone! He's gone. Foo foo! And another piece of quartz! Okie dokes! Hey, we complete section 4! It wasn't randomly extended, so I actually think that's a pretty good ending point, huh? So, folks, thank y'all for watching this episode of Fate's Grand Order, and I'll see y'all next time as we continue on our quest to fix up this singularity. Ta-ta for now!